Nobody really talks about desktop apps anymore. Everything is web-first, cloud-native, or some fancy mobile-first microservice architecture. You'd think desktop apps packed up and left with Windows Vista. But the reality? They're still very much alive, and in some places, more powerful than ever. So here's the question. Is desktop app development still relevant in 2025? Are we just holding on to nostalgia? Or is there a real reason some apps still need to live outside the browser tab? Let's break this down. First off, yeah. It looks like desktop apps kind of fell off. When's the last time you downloaded a brand new app to your computer that wasn't a browser or a game launcher? The rise of the web made deployment easier. You don't have to worry about OS compatibility, installer files, or praying your user doesn't click no on the admin prompt. Plus, with frameworks like React, Vue, and Angular, spinning up an app became faster and more accessible. Why ship a desktop build when you can launch on the web and have it work everywhere? Even when we tried to bridge the gap with tools like Electron, all we got were bloated memory hogs that basically just embedded Chrome in a window. Slack, Discord, Visual Studio Code. They're desktop apps technically, but they're just glorified web apps in disguise. That gave desktop dev a bit of an identity crisis. People started asking, if everything's just HTML and JavaScript now, what's the point? But here's the thing, desktop never really died. It just moved underground. If you look at industries that actually need performance, like video editing, music production, gaming, or financial trading, desktop still dominates. You can't edit 8K footage or simulate high-frequency trades in a browser tab. You need access to the GPU, to native threads, to real system memory. That's where desktop shines. Apps like DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere, Ableton Live, these aren't just apps. They're machines built for power. And they don't run on your Chromebook. And it's not just creative tools. Enterprise software is still packed with desktop apps. Banks, law firms, and government agencies often require offline access, extreme security, or local data processing. You're not going to build a high-security trading terminal with React and Tailwind. You're going to use native code that's fast, secure, and tightly coupled with the operating system. That world hasn't gone anywhere. It's just not flashy. What's changed is how we build those apps. We've moved away from writing pure C++ or Java Swing and into cross-platform tools that can output native apps from shared code bases. Electron kicked things off even if it was bloated. Now we've got lighter, more efficient frameworks like Tari, Flutter, and .NET, MAUI. Want to build a secure, fast, cross-platform app using Rust and a web front end? Tari's your friend. Want a single code base for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and the web? Flutter's got you. Even VS Code, yes, the code editor used by like every dev ever, is built on Electron. So while we laugh at how much RAM Slack uses, we're all still living in this hybrid world where desktop and web collide. But when it comes down to it, the reason desktop apps still matter is simple. Performance and control. The web gives you reach, sure, but desktop gives you power. It gives you access to system resources, better security models, and offline reliability that web apps still struggle to replicate. And in 2025, as AI, simulation, and local-first tools become more common, we might even see a desktop resurgence. When every browser app is just a thin wrapper for a cloud model, some companies might want to bring things back in-house. Local-first design isn't dead, it's becoming strategic again. So is desktop app development still relevant? Oh, absolutely. Of course, pal. Whatever you think is best, I will see to it. It's just not for everything anymore. You won't build your next photo sharing app or chat tool as a desktop only experience. But if you're building high performance, mission critical, or deeply integrated software, desktop is still the king. It's not about what's trendy, it's about using the right tool for the job. And desktop apps, they still have jobs, important ones. Oh, and if you are still more about that browser life and want to improve your software engineering stats, why don't you check out today's sponsor, Educative.io, the platform built by developers for developers. What makes Educative different? No video lectures, just interactive, in-browser coding environments that let you learn by doing. Whether you're brushing up on grokking the coding interview, diving deep into system design, or finally wrapping your head around machine learning for software engineers, Educative has a course for it, and it's taught in a way that actually sticks. It's the go-to for engineers at places like Google and Meta, and honestly, it deserves the hype. Plus, you can preview any course for free, and if you like it, use my link in the description for 10% off. Oh, and if you hurry up, you can grab an additional 71% off from the Memorial Day discount, so hurry up. Thank you for sitting through another dumb tech rant, and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to become a fellow codehead.